Okay, guys, I want to talk a few minutes about crazy boxing fans. Uh, the craziness of the internet and boxing and whatnot. This younger generation, uh, and I'm talking 20 ish and younger. A guy wins a fight, and all of a sudden, he's the best thing since the invention of chocolate milk. Uh, a guy that's been great loses a fight, and he ain't worth nothing. He's trash, and move on from him. Go on down the road, and that's that. Boxing used to have a huge, huge fan base. Um, you might have not known who won the World Series, the NBA Finals, the uh, Super Bowl, but you damn sure knew who the World Heavyweight Boxing Champion was. Everybody knew that. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if it's just the doming down of the public. I can't answer that. But I'm going to say something that's going to make a lot of people upset here. Uh, I've never been a huge Wilder fan. And I'm going to give you my reasons why. Uh, People have tried to contradict this statement, and they failed every time. Uh, the people around Deontay Wilder know this to be true. It is the truth. Drink your milk and get used to it. Uh, when I first heard, we, we had a, a heavyweight uh, former Olympian the did boxer that didn't jump rope and at some point when he soon turned professional just said I'm not jump roping no more named Deontay Wilder I said no there's no way this will go far and it went a lot farther than what I thought it did um, whether you like it or whether you don't Klitschko was fighting everybody put in front of him. Uh, when the brother, when Vladimir Klitschko's brother, I think it was Vasily, retired and Deontay won the WBC belt, uh, he, he wasn't, who was he fighting? What's on his resume now as far as wins go? So, I wasn't a huge fan of his. Uh, that's one thing that did it. The other thing that did it, uh, he had a good trainer. Uh, but he had a trainer with a flaw. And the one flaw was the trainer was being a yes guy to the fighter. And you can't operate like that. That's why boxing sucks today. That's why you younger guys are watching fights and you think they're good fights. And those of us that went through 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s realized the tra that it, what, you're, what you're thinking is great is pure trash. And it is. Because it's becoming to be the order of the day. Boxers that won't listen to their trainers. Uh, we're redefining what they're even called. Now they're not trainers, they're coaches. And that's okay. The world moves on. Things happen. You know, people use different verbiage and nouns for things. Names, whatever. Uh, so that was my thing with Wild. Uh, when he fired the guy he had, I can't think of the guy's name right now, but he's a good trainer. Like I said, the only flaw he had 
he was being too much of a yes guy to Deontay Wilder. And you, this is starting to be uh, the case with Tyson Fury, as a matter of fact. I know that to be a fact. I can spot it 10,000 miles away uh, through the way a fighter's conducting himself, uh, how he's fighting, what's going on, and here's why. I know if a guy's got a good trainer and he's getting in and he's pit in piss poor condition or not taking something seriously, he's done something that the trainer's backed off of the fighter and being a yes guy or just saying, well, okay to it, to get money, the trainer to get money for himself. And that's not good. Uh, that's a whore trainer right there. I don't know of no other way to put it. That though, that that is trainers prostituting themselves for a dollar bill or a pound or whatever currency they're dealing with, and it's not good. And nobody should be respecting that. Nobody. So Deontay Wilder fires the guy. He's a big name guy. I just can't think of his name. He was a former Olympian and whatnot. Uh. Then he gets a fighter out of the blue that I guess he's just friends with, a buddy, Malik Scott, to come train him. And all of you, even the ones with these great boxing channels, oh, this guy's going, Malik Scott's going to get him straight. He's going to get him straight. And I kept saying, the first thing Malik Scott needs to get the boy to do is jump rope. And it didn't happen. And I had people coming on, these supposed insiders. He's listening to Malik, and he's jump roping, and he's doing all this. Oh, he wasn't doing shit. He wasn't doing nothing. Nothing changed. He got more of a prostitute trainer than he had with the other guy. So I gave Wilder a lot of grief. Uh... You know, I'm a little online way. I'm, I'm nobody. Uh, but uh, I gave him some grief. But you know, I want to tell you all something. You all see that we're on his bandwagon. Now he's lost and you're, you're on the AJ bandwagon because AJ won. And I got a newsflash for all you young fellows out there and young ladies that are boxing fans. Uh, Deontay Wilder, on his worst day, on the day he lost to Joseph Parker, would have, not could have, would have beat the heck out of Anthony Joshua. I can't help you kids out there can't see that. Uh, on Deontay Wilder's worst day, bad reflexes, all slow for Deontay Wilder. His reflexes and his speed would dominate Anthony Joshua because Anthony Joshua is a psychologically damaged fighter. And this last fight that he just won hasn't fixed that. He's going to have to get punched and get punched hard and fight through it. I've seen this over the years happen to heavyweight after heavyweight after heavyweight. Work the same guys that were working and helping me and helping train people that were training me and help themselves train me almost 50 years ago now, uh, or 45 years ago, uh, were the same people working with a former world champ that got knocked out uh, in maybe the last 30 seconds or 45 seconds of the 15th round in a fight he was totally dominating, dominating until he got knocked out and lost his crown in the 15th round. Go look that up. I ain't even going to mention who it is. Go look it up. 
if you don't know who it is off the bat, you really need to think real hard before you're criticizing old people for what they're saying, young fellas and young ladies. Uh, you don't know what you're talking about. You have only solved a horrendously awful product. And what you even base what you've seen with your own eyes while it's happened is junk that wouldn't qualify you if you've watched boxing the last 10 years to be an authority on anything and especially the psych psychology of uh, fighters. And it's not my opinion, it's just truth. That would be truth there. And so we all got our opinions and that's good, but come on, folks. I got on to Wilder because he wasn't jump roping. I got on to Wilder because he had yes men around him. I wasn't getting on to him uh, being ugly and just bashing the guy down to no end. Some of you might could look at that and say, well, yeah, you did. Uh, because I did things, I said things like, he's worried about the fashion of what he's wearing on a particular day more than he's worried about his career. And he was. And that's the product of having yes men around him. And Deontay Wilder doesn't have the psychology, no more than AJ does, uh, to have someone around them and do things their way and not listen to them do what they're told to do. They don't have the psychology they to do what they want to do. They, they need to be told what to do. And uh, I'll give you another one that needs that. Fury. I'll give you a... Uh, I, I don't necessarily know about Usyk. Usyk's probably got the smarts. He could adapt and do some things on his own and maybe not listen to this thing over here or this thing over here and skate right through it. But there's nothing great about Usyk. Usyk can pivot. He's got good footwork. Uh, he's not fast, even for a heavyweight. Uh, I don't know what you guys are basing all this on. Uh, heavyweight division is in shambles right now. Period, point blank, end of conversation on that. Uh, why? Because it just is. It's in shambles. I don't see how any boxer, trainer, boxing channel, boxing insider, a boxing expert could say otherwise to this. And furthermore, I don't care what Teddy Atlas would be saying, uh, Larry Merchant, I don't care what anybody's saying, uh, former great trainers, former pro crown holders, I, I could care less. I know what I see. And uh, it's, it's just awful. And uh, it's a good thing about this, though. Uh, there's groups of guys coming up right now, and it's all going to change. And half of you today that are thinking you're getting a good product in heavyweight boxing are going to be shocked. And you're going to be looking back at this decade as it's been so far, and you're, you're going to say, what trash I was watching, and I thought it was decent. Uh, this is the best error ever. And uh, good errors always come behind bad ones. Uh, hate it for you, the Klitschko errors, although maybe not as exciting for North Americans or people that lived in England. Uh, they didn't like this Russian or Ukrainian champions, the him and his brother. It was way more better boxing than any of the trash that any American heavyweight has put out. And I will remind everybody, Fury beat an old Klitschko. He beat an old man. He beat a guy older uh, than Ali was uh, in his last two fights that he got totally just beat up in. So uh, none of these guys going today are going to be up in their 40s and hit a lick, because they can't hit a lick in their early 30s or mid-30s. So uh, 
I stand behind that statement. I know what I see. If Wilder were to fight Joshua tomorrow, you would see a uh, a psychologically broken Anthony Joshua. You can't see it because you just saw him win a fight and you, as far as you can see. But I do. Wilder would hit him with a one or two rights and Joshua would fall completely to pieces. And you'll see it in the next couple of fights. No matter who Joshua fights, it's a possibility that won't happen. It's a possibility he I believe he is getting straight in his head, but he's by no means ready. And he's going to have to face the heaviest of the heavy punchers in the division, uh, which who, 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 are the, who would they be other than Wilder? I don't know of anybody that really punches in the division. Uh, and other than A.J. himself, who packs a good, a damn good one. Uh, but if the fight were held tomorrow, uh, or if it's held in March, if Wilder does fight AJ, Wilder is going to beat AJ. You're you're going to see a fight happen. You're going to see a pumped up Wilder come in there, who's really gearing to win against a nemesis, a fellow black guy that's getting the black fans, and that's exactly what it would turn into. Uh, uh, and they're going to butt and. Wilder will, uh, will annihilate Anthony Joshua. Uh, will annihilate him. Uh, he'll knock him silly a couple of times. Anthony Joshua will fall completely to pieces. I can't help you can't see that. Uh, if that fight takes place, I guarantee you, you will see that. Um, AJ's not ready. If they fight in March, he still won't be ready. This takes a lot of time. And I would suggest to AJ's camp, if I had their ear, I would tell them, I would say, look, you're going to have to get, get in with some people that aren't necessarily that good of a fighter, but fighters can really pack a punch because you need to be really hit upside your head a few times and you need to work through that. And uh, Deontay Wilder's not the guy to be working through anything like that with. Because he's he, he's the hardest hitter in the division. Maybe slow now. May, don't have no legs. Never had no legs because the damn man refused to jump rope or do work on his legs. You look at him, a great big upper body, and literally, uh, he's t eight inches, nine inches taller than me, and my thighs are more big around, and my calves than Deontay Wilder. So he. But he won't need legs or anything else because AJ's damaged. He's been damaged for quite a while. I can't help y'all can't see that. He's been damaged since that first uh, when he when he lost to the uh, to the Latino guy in the U.S. Uh, Anthony Ruiz. Uh, he's been damaged since then. Hadn't been worth the heck since that first fight where the announcers told you all wrong. He quit. He took a knee and he quit. And they were saying, no matter what happens, Anthony Joshua's never quit. I'll tell you the guy who's never quit, Deontay Wilder. That's the guy that's never quit. So I guess I'm doing this uh, uh, because... It's kind of U.S. family. And uh, the grief I'm seeing Wilder get right now, although I'm not a big fan of his at all. I've been a tough critic on him. I don't like seeing what you younger fellows are doing and writing and so-called boxing experts and all this are saying about this guy. Because uh, it just goes to show how much you guys don't know because... A month ago, he was the greatest thing uh, that he knocked out uh, that other guy, Hellenius, or whoever it was. Wait, first round knockout in that, most of you were like, 
Oh, he's back. He's great. Malik Scott's working wonders with this guy. Now, now I want you to ask yourself, how much do you think you really knew? Because I was telling you, he ain't back. This ain't good. Something's wrong with this man. And other than me and Mr. G over there at Real Talk Boxing, I didn't hear anybody, none of you experts on these boxing channels, uh, other than he and I, uh, maybe he saw somebody else, but other than he and I, I don't know of anybody that looked and saw something wrong with Wilder from the waist down. And there was just something wrong. So, uh, I don't know where all your expert opinions come from. You're in your 20s, earlier, mid 30s, and you're some expert at something. Uh, you know, I, I was often told, and I believe it, and I believed it when I was in my 20s and, and teens, a man ain't got a lick of sense till he hits his 30s. And uh, so I can just tell you guys that you're, you're, you're under 30 and 18 and you're some kind of boxing authority, I would really think again on that. And I would think before I'd go attacking other people, they have watched this sport for 30, 40, 50 plus years. Uh, nobody's opinions or uh, what we see is not perfect and ed ed etched in stone, but it's a lot better than what you young fans are talking about because you guys, you don't even know what boxing really is because you ain't seen none. Uh, I often, uh, I, I got so much rolling through my head and I'm so old I can't remember half the names, but every uh, Tank Davis is the best U.S. fighter we got right now. And the other guy, his, his name's Haney. Uh, he's right there with him. I'd like to see that fight. It's not going to happen because I won't be able to get the weights worked out. But, uh, uh, you know, a guy wins and you guys are on the bandwagon. It's the greatest side. He's the greatest pound for pound in the world. And then six months later, the guy loses. Oh, he wasn't there for nothing. And get your story straight. That's young people, really. Uh, and I've been there and I've done that. That's young people that really don't know what they're talking about that invest a lot of emotions behind the guys that they're huge fans of. And uh, the big thing, in boxing, we were never like this. But the big thing when I was a young man, uh, Johnny Unitas and the Colts were winning. Everybody was a Johnny Unitas and a Colts fan. Uh, Joe Namath and the New York Jets were winning. Everybody left the Baltimore camp and were over there rooting for J Joe Namath and the Jets. That's not fans of, of the sport, see. That, 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 there's no loyalty there. It's zero required. That's just mouth running young people. And... Uh, you guys are going to continue to do it. It's nothing I can do about that. But uh, open your eyes and broaden your horizons a little bit, young guys, because uh, be less quick to keyboard warrior it and be more quick to keep your mouth shut and your fingers idle and listen uh, to some of us older guys out here because we're not just whistling Dixie and uh, nursery rhymes uh, and fantasies to you younger people. We've, we've been where you're at now. Ain't nothing wrong with listening to an older fella. Get into the mindset of doing that. You'll be the better off for it. I know when I started doing it, I become the better off for it myself. I look back at all the things the old fellas and old ladies told me when I was younger and it's just a life of, I should have been listening to them. Why didn't I do what they said do? I just, just simply couldn't see it. And uh, 
uh, that's regret. And that's no excuse for you to do the same thing. And I often tell people, uh, when you're dealing with your elders, uh, do as they say, not as they do. And you'll be the better off for it. You'll be the way the better off for it. I often tell Joe, I tell my wife, I tell my daughter, I tell everybody around me. I command everything around me. And I often tell people, uh, I'll be the best friend you got. I'll, I'll, none is greater than he who would give his life for that of his friend. That's what the Bible says. I would do that. Uh, but get out of line uh, and I, you know, I'm, I'm always on it. And I tell Joe all the time, do as I say, not as I do or have done. And you do that, son, and you can be better off for it. And that's what I'll tell all you younger guys and gals out there. Uh, start sitting back and listening more and be less quick to be a little smart, Alec. Get yourself together. Every time you're acting a damn fool, whether you're online or you're at the street corner, you're making your mother and your father out to look like fools. See? Uh, older people, I mean, really, they look at you and they say he or she's the, a product of a bad mother and a father, and you don't want to, you don't want to be like that. So uh, that's my little vent on all this trash talk I'm saying against Dante Deontay Wilder right now. Uh, is he washed up? I don't know. I don't know too much of nothing, but what I do know is. If that man fights Anthony Joshua, he is going to knock Anthony Joshua out. And if he doesn't knock him out cold, Anthony Joshua is going to quit on Deontay Wilder. And on that, young people, I will almost bet the bank on it.